is the Glenn Beck Program. I want to tell you a, uh, I want to tell you a, a, a personal story about Donald Trump um, that uh, shows his nice side and my relationship with Donald Trump, uh, and uh, and also uh, a side of him that I am concerned about. So um, I was staying at uh, the Trump Tower or Trump International um, here in New York when my father died. And it was at the beginning, and you didn't know this at the time, but it was at the beginning that we were just starting to change all of the things that I ate. And I was on a very strict diet of 80 ingredients. And I had to have a chef travel with me because there was nothing that I could just grab off of the shelf. There was literally nothing I could eat that wasn't inspected and right. And I had just been in Los Angeles and we tried it with, um, you know, the shelf uh, with the uh, uh, with the chef at the uh, the hotel that we were staying in and then just going to the store. And we just we couldn't do it. And I needed to get us started on this diet. So we bring a chef in. And he's, he's with me, and I'm staying at the Trump uh, Hotel. Now, hotels have all kinds of restrictions. You're not just going to walk into the kitchen and start using their kitchen. Um, we called uh, Donald's uh, Hotel, and they, we said, look, we have really specific dietary needs, and we have to have our chef at least oversee absolutely every ingredient that goes in. And they were bent over backwards, and they were just unbelievable. And I don't think it was because it was Glenn Beck. I think it was they would do that to anybody. And quite frankly, when you're paying uh, Donald Trump money to stay at a Donald Trump hotel, they probably should bend over backwards and then, you know, twist themselves into a pretzel as well and give you a nice... don't. All of those kinds of hotels don't Don't. do that. The best hotel, we called the best hotel in New York, I think, is the best hotel, the Mandarin. And they they just laughed at us. We thought they'll be the most accommodating because they're the best I think the best hotel in New York and they weren't they weren't at all so we call the Trump Hotel and they were great I'm here for about four days and my father died my father is getting ready to die and I'm called and I'm told you got to get home because your dad may be dead by the time you get here so um, we had made special arrangements for me to be here for 10 days or something and three days into it I'm leaving my father dies the next week Donald Trump calls me and he says, uh, Glenn, um, you, I know you left our hotel quickly and I got a report that you left quickly and, I, and I, I'm not sure. I, I've heard that your father is sick, so I didn't know if you left because of your father or if there was something wrong with the hotel. And I said, no, my father just passed away. And he was very, very kind, very kind. And I said, and Donald, let me tell you something about your hotel. And, and I told him, now, this is this was all good stuff, and he cares about his business, and he's a really he was a very caring guy, and he he went the extra mile and and everything else. Here's what concerns me about Donald Trump. I said to him, "Let me tell you something about your hotel." I said, "Your chef, who I don't remember the name, your chef so and so, and the manager of your hotel so and so." I said they bent over backwards. Uh, Donald, and I just wanted you to know that you have really exceptional people working for you. Now, I say that because I know that when my people, somebody say to me, somebody says to me, hey, Glenn, you know, I dealt with your office and Michelle was really exceptional. Jeffy was passed out in a drunken stupor, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> but we appreciated that. I appreciate that. And I say, thank you very much. And I always respond, You know, because it's true, I hear that about my people, and I am so blessed to have them around. They really, I I am, I couldn't accomplish what we accomplish if it wasn't for my people. And of course, that's how Donald handled the company. That's not the way Donald handled it. I said, I want Hmm. to tell you about your chef, and I want to tell you about your manager, and they were exceptional people. And he said, well, I insist on only the very best, and you know, if you stay at a Trump hotel... You can be guaranteed, because I watch these people closely. And I was like... So he made it about him. Made it all about him. And I thought, the arrogance is stunning, is truly stunning here. Yep. And I say this, not with, Donald Trump has always been very kind to me, very nice to me, very kind. Um, uh, and so I, I don't have anything against him personally. If you're running for, that's Donald Trump. You expect that. That That's who you, he is what you see on television, okay? He is consistently that guy. 
And that guy is funny, and that guy is smart, and that guy... But that guy's not the guy I want running the presidency of the United States. That's not, especially me, I believe that the, the most qualified person, if he's arrogant, is the last person that should be in the office. I want a guy who is so humbled by that office that he is broken and he is down on his knees begging for help. And he understands that it is a blessing to be there. I am, I am certainly uh, not qualified, but if I'm called, I will be qualified. And that's what I'm looking for. Not a guy who says, look, I'm incredibly wealthy. And just because I'm walking into the room, I'll fix it. Because we already have that guy. Just because he's president, this guy that we currently have says that the seas are going to rise. Or cease rising. I can't remember which one it is. That he's going to fix the climate. He truly believes that his presence in the Middle East, without any facts, his presence in the Middle East, his just anointing something, will make it work. Now, I don't think Donald Trump is Barack Obama by any stretch of the imagination. But Donald Trump is a progressive. He's not a conservative. He is a progressive. And you can prove that by the things that he believes in. A progressive believes in high tariffs. A progressive believes the government is the answer. Donald Trump has shown time and time again he believes the government is the problem and if it is run properly, it is the answer. Well, that's what a progressive believes. You'll notice that the Democrats were saying that we need transparency and we need smaller government and we've got to stop with these executive orders, when what they really meant was, we believe in all of these tools that the presidency now has because of George W. Bush. We just believe they're in the wrong hands. They should be in our hands. And right now, the Republicans are saying the same thing. That's why they're not getting rid of Obamacare. They believe in that. They believe in government-run health care. They just believe they can run it better. I don't. I believe the people can run it better. So now let me take you to uh, uh, Donald Trump's policies and his own words. And I just want to ask you, I believe George Washington was the quintessential president. And up until Woodrow Wilson, every American believed that. Woodrow Wilson was the first one to say, I don't think George Washington was all that. He was the one, and the progressives started to change, and us stopped believing in a man could be so humble and yet so strong and so great. So I'm looking for the next George Washington, or if anything close. You tell me if this sounds like George Washington or a president that you would be comfortable representing you in the world. I am officially running for president of the United States. And we are going to make our country great again. Part of the beauty of me is that I'm very rich. Today, I'm very proud of myself. I'm worth many billions of dollars. What a great honor it must be for you to honor me tonight. Everybody says, oh, gee, what a great salesman he is. It's this. It's not my salesmanship. It's what? This. You know what that is? It's the brain power. Why doesn't he show his birth certificate? In life, you need energy as well as brains. Brains is always number one. Because of my genius, okay? If I decide to run, you'll have the great pleasure of voting for the man that will easily go down as the greatest president <laughs> in the history of the United States. Me, Donald John Trump. Yeah. Do you actively go to church, or is that something that it's more just when, when you can? Right. Well, I go as much as I can, always on Christmas, always <laughs> on Easter, <laughs> uh, always when there's a major occasion. Right. And during the, during the Sundays, I'm a Sunday church person. Me too. I, I rarely go on Tuesday to church. Really? Rarely, mm. rarely go Monday and Tuesday. Mm. Uh, as a rule, it's pretty much Sunday. You know? I'm an overnight well, Wednesday Well, there's a lot guy. of Catholics. Is he Catholic? I don't there's know. a lot of Catholics do that do go to church during the week. They go Sunday, yeah. but there's mass every yeah. single day. Yeah, yeah, there's other things you can obviously do at church on other days. But, but those it, people mm -hmm. who go to church every day or occasionally mm -hmm. on a Wednesday don't say, I go to church as much as I can always, 
always in Christmas on Easter. Yeah, we got <laughs>